different. This one received healing. This one received a miracle. So if you don't get a miracle, don't conclude that God is not with you. I sit down. I don't think you are ready for what I'm talking about. So a lot of you have let the devil steal your blessing because God didn't do it the way you were expecting. If all of us has to receive a miracle, then there will not be a place for supernatural health or divine healing because miracle is instant, but healing is a process. So even today, after we anoint you, some people are going to get healed instant. Others two on their way home, they are going to get their healing. Some of them, they will keep thanking God after one week, their healing will be restored. Whatever it is, the most important thing is the results. What is the will of God in heaven? Thy will be done on earth as it is in where? As it is in where? Oh, you are not talking to us. He sits in where? Look at what God is thinking about you and look at God's wish for you. Third John chapter 1. Third John. Third John 2. The book of Third John. It's only one chapter. Verse 2. He said, Beloved. God is calling you. You are his beloved. I wish above all things. So this is God's, God's, God's plan and wish for your life. I wish above all things that you do what? What is the first thing you do? This scripture is very, it's, pack, it's a package. Give it attention. The first thing God wants to do is to do what? So you have to have money. You have to have good car. You have to have a good house. You must marry a very nice, beautiful black lady. Stay with her, enjoy her, kiss her three times every day. God say you are prospered. When your television is poor, you just call Samsung, they give you another one. You call LG, they bring you fridge. You call this one, you are prospering. You are walking, your car breaks down. I, we are coming to the place that when your car breaks down in the motorway, whilst you are standing there, then you call mechanical lawyer, then they bring you a new car. How many of you believe this is, oh, you are not understanding what I'm talking about. The reason why a taxi driver hit your car and you start crying is that you don't know where the next car is coming from. I wish above all things that that may yes what? So God says after you make money and be in what? And be in what? Have you seen the Bible didn't, the Bible didn't talk about healing? He, he's not even expecting you to be sick. Healing is different from health. Listen, you have to be sick to need healing. When you don't get sick at all, you are walking in divine health. Amen. When sickness or virus come to your body and dies, you are walking in divine nature. Amen. Somebody say, Shema <laughs> Are you getting the point now? So you see, God didn't even talk about your healing because you are, this is, is written to the church. And in the New Testament church, he doesn't expect you to be sick. So when he started the journey, he said, he wishes above all things that you prosper and be in what? Health. Even as what? What is the prosperity of your soul? You are born again closer to Christ. The prosperity of your soul means that you are born again closer to what Jesus Christ. You are growing in the Lord. You are developing in the Lord. Oh, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. That is prosperity of the soul. Somebody say, I refuse to be, I refuse to be broke. Hey, lift your hand and say, I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be poor. I walk in divine health. Yeah. By the time I finish this message, you are going to pursue sickness like pursuing a cat. You will not give it a place. Every sickness in your body, God has power to eliminate it from if you give him the permission. People try to say, hey, I'm sick and I'm going to Britain for doctors to take care of me. They are killing people there that are the, doc the Ghana doctors. I'm telling you. All they have is equipment. Equipment doesn't heal. Mm -hmm. 
It doesn't heal. Hallelujah. Amen. Only God can heal you. Amen. That is why fasting is very important. Yes. The fastest way to cure incurable disease is through fasting. Because fasting faith is more powerful than prayer faith. Yeah. I'll say that again. I'll say that again. If this man is only praying and developing faith, and this one is fasting for faith, this one will arrive faster than this one. And don't tell me that you were sick and you fast and the sickness couldn't go. Everything you want to buy has a price tag on it. If the sickness the devil has attacked you is hypertension, then you don't pay with it with two days, six days fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Because the fasting demands that the longer you stay and the length you stay in the fasting determine the, the level. Listen, one of the things fasting does is that fasting actually doesn't heal you, but it brings you a greater faith for healing. Ah. So fasting has a tendency to lift you from, from little faith to a very great faith. Jesus, they say, why couldn't we cast him? I say, because of your unbelief. So, and this unbelief goes for by nothing, but by fasting and prayer. So fasting has a capacity to give you faith that natural prayer cannot give you. Oh. I wish above all things that I may as what? And be what? Even as what? One of the most, you see, when you are sick eh, and you are believing God for healing and you are thanking God for healing and you still feel the symptoms, it doesn't mean that God has not healed you. I'm going to give you one scripture. All you need is to get a scripture and hang on it. So anytime I even have symptoms in my body, I'll be attacked by all kinds of things that have knocked them down. All kinds of things. Hallelujah. All kinds of things. Sometimes I go to hospital, they can check me and my wife and say, I have this disease, but my wife doesn't have it. And with time, I just knock it off. It will not be even a discussion. I have not even shivered once for any sickness. I have never been afraid. If the devil come to me one day, even tell me that I have HIV, I will never be afraid of it. Because of the things that have been built inside me. No. And I know how to deal with it. May you receive grace to deal with whatever it is. Now, who make HIV so magnified and fearful? It's medical science. Yeah. They want to take somebody's picture who has it, who is going to die, who is not born again. Mm. And they presented it on television. Because Satan has access to your ear gate and your eye gate. Oh, let me go to the people. I'll get somebody. So let me tell you something. No sickness is beyond God's capacity to heal. I will tell you the way it is. And if you don't, if you like, well, okay, hallelujah. That's the way we preach. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Huh? In the book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 13. Anytime you are sick and you are believing God for healing, God says he's working on your body. Listen to this. For it is God. Which worked what? Which worked what? Who is working in you? Both to will and to do of his good work. Plus, so at the end of the day, when you get your breakthrough, God takes pleasure out of it. Oh, come on. I'm talking to somebody here today. Today, you are going to receive your healing for God to take pleasure out of your healing. Ah, ah, ah. By the time I finish, I will curse every disease in every, this room. And as Jesus cursed the fig tree and died, everything I curse today is going to die to the root. If you know the way heaven is happy, this message I'm preaching. The Lord told me, son, if you preach this, I'll be very happy. Somebody is the reason why this thing is being preached. Who is that person? Wow. Does sickness please God? No. So you can't say when you are sick, God is happy. He is working in you. It is God who is working in you, both to will, to do of his good pleasure. That is what the King James said. God is, for God is working in you. Don't be celebrating sickness. Even if you have a pill you take every day, start stepping to it by faith. If you take three pills every day, don't stop it at once, but start taking two. And thanking God for healing. And move it to one. And thank God for your healing. And come to the place. One, they don't take it. Two, they don't take it. And as you develop, the just shall live by what? You didn't call the scripture away. So living itself is by faith. Now, I am going to detour a little bit, change the gear, and show you that. 
in order to walk in divine health, you must also know that death must be your enemy. Because who? Death is a byproduct of sickness. <laughs> so, there are certain sickness the devil can give to you and he has sentenced you to death. So, in order to come out of sickness, you must be an enemy because everybody sitting here, if you go to hospital, if you wake up and then you go to hospital and doctor check you and say you have migraine or headache, as long as this is what the medical science has done to our generation. As long as they can cure the sickness, then everybody is not under threat. But if they can't cure it, then they put everybody under threat. Once they can't cure it, they put everybody under threat. Then they have taken over superiority power on sickness. But there is another power behind medical science. <laughs> Hearing what I'm talking about. Now listen. That is why when you go to court, there is a, a, a secured court, there is a high court, there is an appeals court. Now, the, secu- the high court is only one judge sitting there judging the matter. The reason they put him there, they say he must, he might judge error or this judgment might be error. So if the person there is not satisfied and evidently show that this judgment is wrong, you go to the next court, which is called appeals court. That one, you get three judges sitting on it. And hearing the same case and deciding, if those people make error, you go to Supreme Court. That one, six judges will be sitting on it. So if medical science couldn't help it, bring it. Oh, you are not understanding what I'm talking about. Don't just stop there as a result of ignorance. Because whatever they can cure, they will conclude and tell you that this one, it is going to destroy you. That is why a lot of you sit in doctor's consulting room and when they start shaking their head, they make you cry. I don't listen to what I'm talking. Some of you will find it difficult to take what I'm preaching. But if it's one person I'm preaching for, let him take it. Because listen, listen, the reason why divine health and divine healing is difficult in our generation is centuries of, centuries, centuries, centuries of medical science intruding in our affairs. Centuries. Lift your hand and shout, I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be sick. The violent must take it by force. I said the violent must take it to what? I want to give you some of God's promises to the old covenant people. The people who were not living in the new covenant. The people that were living in uh, Moses' time when they were under the law. I want to give you some of God's word. That is why some meetings I do, uh, I don't need to give an announcement. Like this meeting, I came here on Friday and announced that Monday program is starting. So if you like, come. Because certain program, you don't have to throw it for everybody. This particular preaching is for you. That is why you are here. My wife was working in a bank those days. And they were supposed to give you a card to go to their hospital. You understand? Some of you work in a place. And then uh, you and your family has access to uh, Akai Hospital. Eh? Or uh, what are some of the hospitals you celebrate? Huh? Senate. Huh? What? Leicester. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Then you are going there. Now. So they told her that bring your husband's picture so that we make a car. He couldn't come to tell me. One of the friends said, he said, he said, he said eh? I'm going to stand before this man and tell him. Declare your stand of faith for everybody to know. Amen. No, that's what it is. That's a, it's a matter of risk. It, 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 if anything can make her unhappy, it's that one. To come to me and say, put me a picture. I like what some villages did to the, uh, the people who do the the national health, they went there to go and register. They said, oh, we are not sick. You have come to bring us sickness. Wait, we are coming. <laughs> they brought sickness and chains and chased the people out of the village. <laughs> no, you see the reason why you are laughing? So, two of you, my wife didn't have the boldness. For all the three years she worked there, my name didn't enter their record book for going to hospital. Wow. No. 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 <laughs> Impossible thing. Hallelujah. I have read too many books on that. I have studied almost every scripture that talks about divine health in the Bible is in my spirit. If God can do 
it, let no man try. Your philosophy is very strong. If the host went to hospital, doctor tied something in his head and started pumping some bent to her and told him that you have high blood pressure. He said, I don't have it. He said, look, he said, it's not necessary. I can tell you. You are touching it and I'm touching you. I've given it to you. I'll reverse it back to you. You remove the thing and left. He said, the doctor died of high pressure. He is still alive. You don't try this on a Nigeria, man. It's too dangerous. Hallelujah. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Faith needs an aggression. Huh? Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 15. Listen to what God told the old covenant people. These are promises. If it is so colorful in the old covenant, how will it be in the new covenant? Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 15. And the Lord will take away from you what? Ah! This is the scripture I am hanging my family with. How many sickness? Is hypertension included? Is sugar diabetes part? Is HIV part? Then give the Lord a shout if you are here. You either believe the word or you don't. There is no neutral line for faith. You either believe or you don't. And the Lord will take away from you. He said, if the sickness comes, he was going to take it. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness. And will put none of the evil diseases. Now watch this. Here, he is trying to put a line of demarcation between the world and the church. Egypt is the world. Egypt is unbelieving. Egypt is people living under curse. And the Lord said he has already bring some sickness on them. But every sickness that's on them is going to take it away from you. So sickness is not a normal thing in a born again Christian's body. Ah. Ah. <laughs> you are not hearing what I'm saying. Are you with me? Yes. Mm-hmm. Do you know that if a rat came to your house and you don't get a poison or trap, they will stay there? Yes. That is how sickness is. If you don't chase them out, they will stay. And they will start having children. May every sickness in your body be cursed by the authority of the power. The Lord will take away from your sickness and will put none of the evil disease of Egypt evil disease of Egypt, which thou knowest upon you, but it, he will lay them upon all them that hate you. <laughs> it's the word of the Lord, no, I get Let the have in it. So, listen, that is why you must get people that hate you. So that whatever comes against you, God knows where to direct it. Every unbeliever, listen, one day I was reading the Bible, the Lord told me, <laughs> a woman came to Jesus asking for healing. Jesus said, let the children's face be fed. Mm. Mm. He said, no. And then, yeah, teacher. And all oh, the children has not gotten it. So you, a Canaanite woman, you, an unbeliever, mm. let the children first be fed. And he said, healing is the bread of the children. Yeah. So if you are not here, no unbeliever should walk around healthy. <laughs> so listen, if somebody doesn't know Jesus Christ and you are sick, once you are sick, no unbeliever, all the unbelievers in the world must be sick before you can be sick. Yeah. You are not hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> I pray that you get it after. Am I saying something today? From today, you will know nature and pamper sickness again. You will refuse to allow sickness to enter your body. And the Lord will take away from you what? All oh, what? Sickness. It's a thief of destiny. Sickness is an enemy to your soul. God hates it, so you must hate it. The reason for Jesus Christ in you is that whatever could not affect Jesus must not affect you. Can you imagine Jesus Christ is sick and admitted at Kualibu Tichi Hospital? And Peter them are holding banana and kaffa to go and visit him. Master, what is the temperature? May they not find you there again. Today he says something that pricks my heart. He asked him a question in John chapter 8 verse number 46. Give me the new, new NIV. Let me see the way the NIV put it. <laughs> I love the way Jesus said, can any of you prove me guilty of sin? So he asked them a question. I am qualified to do what I'm doing. Which one of the world can come one thing to say that you did this thing wrong? The guy was bold to justify his righteousness. He said, which one of you can convince me that I did this thing wrong? 
If you don't believe it, can't you believe the miracles that I do? He said, Wait, can any one of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? It means that if you don't have any proof that I have sinned, then believe that everything I'm telling you is the truth. Yeah. Some people have stopped church because they were sick. The people they didn't visit today. I was sick. They didn't. Who asked you to be sick? <laughs> Very immature level of your Christianity. You are sick, and people must come and visit you. Hey, I can't imagine that. Once you can allow people to come to your sick bed, one day they will come to your funeral. Okay. <laughs> Some of the people who die in a very good old age, <laughs> even nobody cries in the funeral, the funeral becomes celebration. Now, listen to me. <laughs> Kenneth Hage, bless, he called his family. Kenneth Hage, engineer, called the family and told them that by 6 o'clock he has to be with Jesus at the age of 86. Gather them and pray for them. <clears throat> And 6 30, he's gone. If the Hosa came to church one day, wear white, white, and preach a message, the benefit of death. Benefit of death, that was his message. White dress, white shoe, white ring, everything. He said, Benefit of death, finish and say, Look, look at the school I've built. Look at how God has used me to do. I have done over 80 something crusade. I have traveled to all this one. I am tired. I want to go and rest. See you there. He hand over the microphone, went to office, sat down, he's gone. No pain, no sickness, no my head, no massaging, no nothing. Today your your junku. By the time we finish, I graduate. May you be delivered. Amen. <laughs>